Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. Today, I'm going to take on a technical subject, diffraction, which relates to how sound propagates around objects. But I'm going to narrow it down to not all objects in space, but speaker baffles and what it means in terms of performance of a loudspeaker. And to do so, I'm going to use two props, this cardboard piece and the Kaya S12 loudspeaker from Vivid Audio. Now, the first thing to understand about diffraction is this. When a driver through the loudspeaker emits its sound, it doesn't do so like a laser. In other words, it doesn't project sound straight out and only straight out. The waves travel straight out. They're forward focused in a traditional loudspeaker, but they travel to the sides as well. So around the cabinet. So remember that they don't just come right at you. They travel in all directions and this is where the cabinet comes into effect you also need to know that the frequencies that get affected by cabinets have to do with the length of the sound waves and bass frequencies have very long wavelengths and if you can imagine wavelengths of many inches or feet those waves like waves in a pool are going to travel around surfaces relatively easy you have to have a large obstruction in place to stop it but small sound waves such as those that come from the tweeter the high frequencies are very short so it doesn't take much for those little tiny sound waves to get obstructed and this is where the cabinet affects them so now let's use this piece of cardboard as an example it's got two sides one with ridges coming forward, one without. Let's pretend this hole is the tweeter. Now, before I go on, I have to thank Paul Barton of PSB Speakers because he was the first to explain this to me pretty much like I'm going to explain it to you. Okay, this is the front baffle of a speaker, say. Now, this piece of cardboard already had the hole cut in it. Typically, the tweeter is much higher, but because it already had the hole, I just left it there, and we're going to use that as the example. Flat front, no obstructions obstruction so as i said a driver just does not emit sound like a laser directly forward it directly goes forward and it travels to the sides and along the cabinet as well so let's go to this one first it's traveling forward and it's traveling to the sides and it hits this obstruction what's going to happen to it there will be sound directly coming from the tweeter to the listener but there will be sound traveling to its sides and along the cabinet. And when those sound waves hit the obstructions on the cabinet, if it has them, they'll be deflected and possibly aimed to the listening position. But they're delayed in time, and that's really important. You have multiple sound sources then arriving at the listener. And this is readily measurable when we're measuring speakers in the frequency domain, in other words, the frequency response, we look at those spikes and dips, which are often the result of those deflections. They add to the original signal constructively or destructively. In other words, increase it or decrease it. And you will hear that because it's an amplitude change. In other words, a volume change. So now let's flip this around. No obstructions much better not perfect i'll explain the sound travels again to the listener directly and then travels along the cabinet but it doesn't have those obscene obstructions at the edge so it doesn't get that hard deflection however when it travels around the cabinet there's actually an air pressure change at this edge it's because the wave is coming over here kind of like an airplane wing and then traveling around it, and that little edge creates a little effect, not near what an obstruction causes, but some effect. So although a flat baffle is better than what's seen here with basically a frame around, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good and can work well. So obviously we can do better, and this is where the Vivid Audio Kaya S12 comes in, Designer Lawrence Dickey, in all his loudspeakers, designs them so that there are no obstructions on the baffle to cause those effects I'm talking about. So what do we have here with the Kaya S12? Well, notice around the tweeter, 
it's recessed. That's actually a waveguide, something I'm going to talk about in general in a future video, what a waveguide does. But notice around the waveguide, there are no obstructions. There are not even any screws or bolts holding the tweeter in there. It's to give it a smooth surface. What you want to see, as many people know, in a skateboard park. You don't want a little pebble on the concrete that's going to jam up your wheels and stop you and deflect you into the air. The tweeter's output can come off the tweeter and it goes to this generously curved edge here and here and here. You can't possibly deflect off this edge like you can even with a sharp edge where there's an air pressure difference. This is what Vivid does extremely well and other companies as well. They give generously shaped edges to eliminate those obstructions and that is key. You want a nice, smooth front baffle with curved edges. So basically the cabinet disappears and allows the sound waves to simply flow around it. Now, like I said, there are other companies doing a great job as well, creating cabinets that minimize those obstructions for the cleanest wave launch. But why not everyone? Why doesn't everyone go for the pinnacle? Well, one reason is cost. It's extremely expensive to produce a cabinet like this this is a no compromise two-way. It's not inexpensive. It's a lot easier to create a cabinet with hard edges like this. It's as simple as that. Another thing could be an aesthetic choice. This is a decidedly different looking shape. Squared off cabinets, well, those are more traditional. But whatever reasons there are for choosing a particular cabinet shape, you want to minimize those obstructions. In my examples, bad better, best. I hope this helps explain this topic. Thank you for watching.